We'll open up the meeting. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or I should say good afternoon. This is a little different, isn't it? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today is August 3rd, 2021, uh, approximately 1 um, 05 p.m. Welcome to the Plumbing, Piping, and Examining Board with the Department of Consumer Protection. At this time, we have uh, some um, panelists here today. Um, Karen, who is um, with us today? We can let them in at this time. We have um, Betsy Guerra. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Did you want, I can let her in? Um, yep, yep. Give it, it takes a second for it to be moved over. She should be with us. Um, let's see. There she is. Can you hear us, Betsy? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. There you are. Okay. Hi, Hi Betsy. Chuck Appleby here. We have a Hi, quorum. Chuck. Nice to see you. You too. Thank you. It's been a while. I know. I usually run into him in the parking lot of some <laughs> marine company or something. Yeah, big Y. Yeah, big Y. That's right. Big Y. Yeah. Yeah, um, we have other panelists here today, uh, Karen, as well. You said that we have other people here as well. We can let them. That, that's it. Everybody's where they should be. Oh, okay, great. Hey, good uh, Good afternoon, Betsy. Thanks for coming. Um, so uh, we're here talking about a limited plumbing license for water meter installation only. Um, I sent the copy once the plumbing board had a chance to review the language last week. I had then had uh, Leslie O'Brien send that copy over to you on Friday afternoon. Yes, I did receive that and I um, shared that with um, our members of the Connecticut Water Works Association. We did have a call yesterday to discuss and I know I did send some questions to Leslie, and she shared those with attorney Anon, I believe it is, um, and responded to some of those, but she then indicated in her response that the issue relative to the ex existing exemption for municipal employees and employees of public service companies was reflected in a different draft. I know that's existing statute. So I was a little confused there. But we did have an opportunity to discuss, and I, I do um, want to let you know that our members are, uh, you know, very appreciative of the, the board's efforts to address this. And I think that by and large, they believe that the creation of a limited license is a reasonable way of resolving this issue. Uh, they just had some questions on the language and I think want the opportunity to kind of go back and look at some, you know, it references certain chapters of the statutes to be able to just have the time to, to fully vet it. Um, so at this point. Um, yeah, oh, okay, uh, Betsy. Um, Paulette Annan, I believe she is here. Great, yeah. Okay, great. So um, I'm gonna write that down. Okay, um, so what, um, what are your, uh, what's your initial, um, uh, information you'd like to ask the board, Betsy. Um, what's your first question, I guess I would say? Well, the, as I mentioned, and I did share these questions with Cam Champlin, and I believe you were on the thread, Chuck, and DCP. Um, the first is just the existing municipal exemption. So typically, an employee of a water company would, if a meter is broken, would be the uh, be permitted to change that out without having a, a license. Um, I think this issue that involves the advanced metering infrastructures where municipalities and, and water other water companies are moving ahead with the replacement of thousands of meters uh, throughout their service area. And that's kind of what prompted this issue. But typically if it's a broken meter, me, uh, that needs to be replaced, it would be the employee that performs that. So they, they just want to make sure, first of all, that that existing exemption is not um, impacted by the creation of a limited license for water installation. So my understanding is that there's another draft, and I don't know that we've had the opportunity to look at that. Um, 
So that was one issue. Um, the other issue had to do with continuing education. I don't know that they necessarily are concerned that they would have to do continuing ed. I think they just want to know if that's the case. Um, the, there was an issue with the um, grounding wire and whether that would fall under the scope of the meter installation because the meter itself is battery operated. It's not a live um, electric device. Um, and the attorney did respond that that would be included under the scope of that. Um, and then I think- I know, just, Betsy, oh, Betsy the, the, limited, the limited license for the meter device, the millivolts that's created by a meter spinning and the reader installed uh, installation and maintenance is included in our language there. The jumper concern that we have is, and I spoke with Larry Valerie's over at the electrical board as well, is it's important that like, like say for instance, I do work in East Lyme and I work on water services. So they do mostly copper over there. So you got a copper line coming into the house that attaches to the meter, sometimes plastic, but most times uh, it's copper. Um, and over on this side of the river, um, on the Connecticut water side, we use mostly copper, you know? So um, we like to put a jumper across because what happens, Betsy, 40, 50 years ago when we were using aluminum wire feeding from the utility panels and transformers into the house, sometimes those soils, we had the telephone, we had the cable, we had the power, and we had the water all in the same trench. And those aluminum wires would become bare. The insulation would come off of it, Betsy, and moisture and dampness, because obviously it's direct buried. Most things we see today, we like to use a conduit, right? PVC on, on everything we do. So because of that, that can electrify the ground a little bit, those power wires, and they can run um, over to the water service line. So if you disconnect the meter, there could be a probability, and it does happen, it happened to us a couple of weeks ago, uh, where you have to put a jumper, actually a set of jumper cables, on your, on your inlet to the meter and one on the outside of the meter. So the power would run around that while you disconnected the meter and put in a new meter. So it's really a, a, a safety issue that we would like to include that language into this. You guys, the guys that do the service meters already know about this. I'm sure they've all been uh, tickled by a, a, a power surge before. When, when, once they get tickled, they'll never forget it the next time. They'll put the jumpers on there. And we just want to make sure that, and it's cleared by Larry over at the electrical board, that we can include that in our language. Does my, my plumbing board have any problem with that? Yeah, and I think they just wanted to confirm that it would fall under the scope of this license and not require a separate, uh, because initially the department had indicated that the meter installation would require a plumbing license holder to perform the work and an electrical license holder. So yeah, I see what you're saying, but you're thinking of the L5 on the electrical side of it there. But I would, um, I, I, we we're going to put this in the language for safety. We'd rather it there. Um, of course, UL approved pipe clamps is very important that they're used uh, for electrical. We don't want to just use uh, uh, hose clamps and, and jump them with the wire across. We want to make sure that it's a UL approved electrical conduit. I mean, electrical con uh, bonding clamp is what it's called. It's called a, a bonding clamp. And they come in different sizes based on the water service coming into the building. So, um, um, and that's going to be, we would like to include that in the language, Betsy. And I'm sure your people would be okay with that, I hope. No. Yeah, and I, as you know, Chuck, I'm not a uh, technical person, but th I think that's why it'd be beneficial to if we could have a, either a subset of the board or a subset of my group, um, just to walk through the language and make sure everybody's clear on kind of where it is. Because okay, sure. I, otherwise, okay, things yeah. are getting lost in the, my translation back to my members, and I just think it would facilitate, you know, making sure that the language um, reflects the agreement. Um, the other concern, just, oh, sorry. Um, sorry that we did, that we, um, attorney Anand confirmed that it would take several months at a minimum to move through the regulation making process. So I think we're, you know, we understand that. Um, we understand that the issue relative to the rulemaking process and that this wouldn't really fall under the scope of an emergency regulation. 
Um, but I think um, if we can get the language, agree to the language prior to it being formally proposed, it would make it a lot easier than having to raise public comments um, during the formal process. So I don't know if anyone else, I, if because I know the board had hoped that this would be something that they could enact pretty quickly, but it doesn't appear that that's the case. It looks like Todd Bart has his hand raised. Hand up. No. I didn't know Todd was in the meeting. I didn't see him. I um, is who oh, we have Richard here now, and we have Todd Birch. Chuck, Todd, are you moment. looking to say something? Yeah, please. Uh, Chuck, uh, just a point of order uh, with regard to grounding. Uh, doesn't also the dielectric for gas, especially the stainless steel, ground to the water pipe as well? Um, all the grounding through all the stainless steel. Uh, gas you know what i'm talking about yeah you talk about the proper bonding method for cssd tubing i just bring the uh, yeah, exactly and i bring that just up because you had stated with regard to the electrical i just wanted to not forget about the gas part right but i think we're just talking about water meters today not gas meters so i just that that is under the plumbing uh code and also the electrical where the electrician would bond that particular cssd tubing to into their panel uh into their bond panel and then uh also the plumber if it's properly um done if a bond um is put on to the copper pipe from the electrical panel the plumber can now um install the bond clamp from the cssd tubing with an approved, approved UL pipe clamp to the uh, copper water supply in a home. Okay, so I just wanna check on that. Thank you for clarification. Thanks, Todd. We have Richard with us too there? Yes. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm sorry about that, uh, Betsy. We had a little more clarification. Um, uh, yes. I get that as far as, uh, uh, Betsy was talking about uh, electrical licensing and stuff. That's a different type of system. That's with Schlumberger, and they tie it into the telephone system of each of the homeowners so they can read it from a central location. So that does require a license because they were doing telephone inter interconnect work. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, yep, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the new technology out there. You're right. That would probably yep, be an electrical. Uh, um, so that would be something that would have to be worked in if that's what they want to do as well. You repeat that. So if they want to do what type of? The water meter gets connected to the t telephone system in the house. So they could read it from one office somewhere in Connecticut. Rather than drive around with vehicles with antennas and pick up the reading as they drive down each street. Um, that, that wasn't my understanding. And again, that's why I think it would be better to have a meeting where I could get a couple, at least two of the representatives that understand kind of what is involved in the meter, because I'm uh, unfortunately not in a position to know that or not. Um, is that like Wi-Fi, Richard? Like they connect uh, with the uh, the internet systems in a home to the meter, and then somebody can put or an office can put an app on their computer systems and keep an eye on their water usage. And if they have a leak, is that what you're kind of leading to? Well, anything can happen nowadays. But back when the board made its original ruling with Schlumber J back in whatever it was, 98 or whatever, I gave you guys the board minutes. Um, it was, a, they tied in directly to the house tele, telephone system. Yeah, I don't think the, that's one the, of the hazards. One of the hazards that came up is some of these people have emergency call systems connected in their house. So they wanted to make sure it was done properly so that the people could still get um, their emergency service. So my, my, my understanding with the new meters is it's going to be right from the central location. That's the whole difference. They don't have to send a, read, a meter reader out to, to um, check everybody's meter at, you know, whatever, every quarter, or whatever it is they do. Uh, it, it's going to be right from the central location, so they don't have to have these people doing this work. And I think that's the reason for the new meters, if I'm not. 
So it I'm, is. It provides more timely price signals. So even if you're uh, the homeowner, you you under, you can see whether or not for some reason your usage is up. Uh, you know, we've had people complain that there's been a leaky toilet in their basement. They weren't aware of it for several months and they get a $1,000 uh, water utility bill. But this kind of meter is promoted by um, the Department of Public Health because it promotes water efficiency, um, leak detection, and things of that nature. So it actually helps control costs for the consumer uh, and for the utility. And is if it's, it's going to interconnect into some form of the, the home system to- I don't think it does. I Because I, I've seen a video of the installation and they're not connecting any to any phone line. Um, but again, I, I appreciate the opportunity to have one of our utility members participate. And you know, this came up really quickly, this meeting. So I was not able to get somebody on there that could speak um, more expertly to that issue. Okay. You know, my understanding is it's battery operated device. So. Okay. Okay. Was there anything else, Betsy, there? No, I mean, though, it, I think it, a lot of it is just timing that, you know, I shared the, the draft language with my folks on Friday. We had a call yesterday, just didn't have time to kind of go through, dot the I's, cross the T's, and look to see whether some of the citations to existing statutes are correct and, and of that nature. So I, I just think if we could kind of get a small meeting together, get people on the same page, we could finalize the language fairly quickly. I don't, there wasn't a lot of concern. It was just, let's make sure this reflects what we're talking about, what both groups are talking about. So I, I have a couple of things that I feel need to be put into that language. Um, I, so what, one of is uh, I'd like to have put in somehow worded under this limited water meter license, any alterations to an existing piping system to accept the installation of a meter shall only be performed by a license P1 or P2. And that is consistent with how they do this, that if there is anything where they the components or equipment are, is non-standard, they do in their contract language require a license yeah. plumber to perform that so i don't think that would be an issue to include that i'm not okay yeah i'm, I'm more worried about it getting in the statute of the license in your contract language right I no i get that. that i get that municipality so and the other thing i'd like to see the language put in is to uh under the limit and it's basically in the same way but stated a little different under the limited water meter license no other plumbing work shall be performed within the structure except for a designated intent of water meter installation, replacement, or service of said meter. So if someone's there, they're they're not going to try and solicit some type of plumbing work within within their within that structure. And if they do, they can be held accountable for it. Right. That's also a contract provision that I know at least Norwalk has relied on. So I don't think there would be a problem reflecting that in the scope of the license or the provisions of the license. Okay. Those are those are those are my two statements, Richard. That I feel is need to be, and your draft is good, but I feel I feel it needs to be a little more uh, out front. You know the, that that kind of verbiage. You've got a valid point there, Jay, with the, about soliciting additional work, but I wouldn't worry about it from anybody doing water meter installations. Your biggest, our biggest threat is from home improvement contractors that have come out to replace windows. They say, "Oh, you got a leaky toilet? While I'm here, I can fix that too." I, that's, I understand. That's happening on a daily basis. I that's understand. hard to control. With the gym, but I gotta stick to the to the license at hand at the moment. We can right. we can attack the home improvement contractor another time. But no, right I now, understand. But I'm saying that's that's a bigger yeah. threat than what you were proposing. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree, and it needs to be in that con in that license right. too. But uh, so yeah, I, I feel though it needs to be uh, strongly reiterated within the language of this license that it's simply a removal and a replacement of a meter and nothing else. Correct. Okay, so Betsy, you'll get back to us uh, with your people. Um, if you want to set up uh, uh, something with um, Leslie um, or or uh, the department, um, 
Yeah, Karen? I think it would be helpful to have the department there because otherwise we're just gonna, you know, because the issue that Richard raised that we haven't discussed that and I'm not clear on what the, again, whether that's an issue or not. Um, so yeah, I do think it would be helpful if we can get um, our members, DCP and plumbing board members uh, in a meeting to discuss this. Can I make a suggestion? Um, in advance of uh, scheduling a second meeting, I think it might be helpful for two things to occur. One, um, Betsy, if, if your, the people on your end who know the technical side of things, if they can put together um, just a written um, uh, summary of the scope of the work, because this I think will give us more information so that we can be able to, the board at least, and those who are more technically inclined, I am not, um, to have a response. So that would be helpful. And then the second, the language that has been proposed, the additional language by Jay Moore and also by the chairperson, the, the, um, the draft that was sent around, um, does anyone know how to do review so that you can add to track the changes, to add your, your new language? Do you know how to do that? Yeah, you'd like us to, that's how you'd like us to present it. To add it? Yeah, yeah. tracking. So that it shows up as new language. So you'd have, you go, if you're in Word, you, you, you click on review, hit track changes, and then you can add your new language. And then we can use that draft with the new proposed language and send it around to everyone. Well, sure. Um, I, I, could, I could try and do that. I think someone would probably write the language. I, I'm sure Richard understands what I'm saying. He might, he might draft that language or maybe Tammy can help me out here. He could draft that language a little more appropriately than I could. And he, he understands what I'm trying to say. Well, so, we, we should probably get the scope of work from. Yeah. If I know what they're looking to do before we do anything, I, I'd like to see their scope before I make a motion and agree to anything on that. On what, what their scope, what their intent is moving okay. forward. All right, I think I can get that pretty quickly. So let me look at what do we have. And, if, and Jay and Chuck, if you want to collectively, between the two of you, come up with a rough draft and just email it to Karen and, and myself, and yep. then I could figure out a way to dovetail it in okay. and, and send it back to you guys. And then at the same time, if Betsy sends us the scope of work and their concerns or what have you, then maybe I could dovetail some of her language into it as well and then come up with like a a little a draft a little closer to what everybody's looking for. Yeah, I, agree. Yep. I definitely yep. like Betsy's uh, group's uh, procedures first before I would do before I would enter anything. All right, I'll try to get you that by the end of the day because I think I, I think it's something that they have. So I haven't seen it personally, but I'm and, sure and, somebody must have it. And make sure everybody adds Karen to their emails. So <clears throat> she could do a final document after we figure out what the word is going to be. Okay. Oh, yep. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, Peter Alferi, please. Uh, I have a question for Attorney Annan. Um, who's to say if Home Depot or a home improvement company was to come forward and ask for an exemption from the plumbing license to do A, dishwashers, B, hot water heaters, faucets, toilets? Are we, are we opening up Pandora's box by by doing this meter exemption or meter special license exemption, or are we gonna, uh, I, I'm just asking for a little uh, advice as far as uh, legality wise, is this, I mean, this worries me. I mean, we're gonna dissect this license and I, I, I'm, I'm Jim made a great point. Home improvement contract is the biggest, biggest problem out there. And I, and I, and I get that. And I'm- I don't, I, I don't think this is a Pandora's box. I, I think this is a, a very, um, discreet um, question and issue that we're dealing with. And so I don't think that would be the case. And, and like anything, if an issue comes up, we deal with the issue as it comes up. So I really don't see it 
going to that extent. Does anybody else see what I'm seeing? Oh, I hear you, Pete. I hear you, Pete. I do. Okay. Okay, does anybody else on the board have anything they want to add? I think Vinny has his hand up. Okay, I can't see Vinny. Yeah. He has his hand up. Vinny, I'm sorry, I can't see you, so uh, let me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you, brother. So, you know, echoing what Mr. Alfieri is saying is, don't want this to be a lead into there's there's a water heater license there's a, there's a toilet swap out license you know when you start getting into the potable water side of the house you're affecting the health of the homeowner it, there's a lot to it so I would, I would just say that whatever is born of this that it's narrowly narrowly you know, zeroed in on the water meter swap out. It's very explicit in that language. I agree. That's all. It, it has to be extremely explicit. Simply remove a meter and replace a meter, nothing else. No alterations, no union changes, no nipple changes, no, no nothing except simply break two unions and install a new meter. That's consistent with what we're looking to do, so. Okay. And, and okay. getting back to what and getting back to what Richard was saying before, as far as uh, economics or whatever the uh, water consumption, a friend of mine works for the city of Norwich water division, meter division. He told me the exact what they can do is they can pull you up on a screen. They can pull you up on a screen. Now I don't know whether it's Wi-Fi. I don't know how it goes because I'm not a computer guy. They can pull you up on a screen and see how much water consumption you've been using. They can pull you up on a street and say, you know, number 22, he's using a lot of water. Something's going on over there. He's got a leak. And um, they did their own meters, of course, because they're all employees of the city of Norwich, but, you know, through the provision that's already there out there for them. But I understand what Richard was saying. They so can they're... they can do that remotely. They don't have to come to the house anymore. And knock on the door and go in the basement. Yeah, I, I think that's why we really need to see the procedure because for, for that meter, I mean, maybe I'm not enlightened on it, but uh, there has to be some kind of power generation in order to make that happen, be it low voltage, be it battery, you know, and, and somehow, how does the battery work? I mean, how do you recharge the battery? Does it recharge by the, the meter spinning? Is that how it recharges the battery? Or is there a voltage line somewhere to that? fact i don't know my point is we shouldn't we can't write off, write it off and say okay to something that we don't know about i don't I think agree. i have enough i don't have enough knowledge to be honest with you and i appreciate the input richard and betsy you'll have somebody that'll come and be able to answer these questions for the board members yes absolutely okay thank you Does anybody else have anything else to say or uh, want to introduce or bring to the table here? Okay, so we'll wait to hear back from you, Betsy, um, and uh, get a hold of Karen or Leslie um, email. Karen, do I have Karen's email? I don't know. I know I have Leslie's. And you may not have my email, so I was going to give that to you if you want me to do that or. Sure. It's my first and last name, so it's Karen, K-A-R-E-N dot layman, L-A-Y-M-A-N, and it's at ct.gov. Okay, great. All right, thank you, Karen. I also want to confirm what organization that you're from. That you've been It's the Connecticut Waterworks Association. Okay. And Betsy, the scope of um, the scope of work summary that you're going to send out, um, please remember to include me as well. Um, I will. Leslie. Yep. Thank you. All right. Definitely. Okay, Betsy. Thanks so much for coming. All right. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know how to help. Here I am. Okay, board. Uh,
Sport ends 1.35 p.m. August 3rd, 2021.